Hi guys, Ghost Peppa here. So today we're going to take a look at a Dark Lord Despia deck profile since the last one I did was actually I think two years ago near the beginning of Master Duel. I really love this archetype and you can still catch people off guard slamming him with OTKs out of nowhere. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because that lets me know what you guys are looking for as a channel. Let's jump in. Okay, so for this deck we run 1 Despian Comedy, 2 Despian Tragedy, 2 Max C, 1 Ret Time Reviver Emitter, 1 Dark Lord Ukobak, 2 Indulge Dark Lords, 2 Aluber Jester of Despia, 1 Dark Lord Emdusk, 1 Archlord Christia, 1 Dark Lord Superbia, 1 Dark Lord Nergal, 1 Dramaturge of Despia, 1 Ad Libitum of Despia, 3 Dark Lord Ixtral, 1 Dark Lord Morningstar, and then for the spells we run 1 Foolish Burial, 1 Gold Sarcophagus, 3 Allure of Darkness, 3 Banishment of the Dark Lords, 2 Dark Lord Contact, 1 Triple Tactics Talent, 1 Greater Pulmerization, 1 Triple Tactics Thrust, 1 Despia Theater of the Branded, 3 Super Poly, 2 Called by the Grave, 1 Branded Opening, 1 Branded in Red, 1 The Sanctified Dark Lord, and 1 Branded Banishment. For the extra deck, we run 1 Mud Dragon of the Swamp, 1 Guerrero Wings of Resonant Life, 1 Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, 1 Predaplant Dragostopelia, 1 Despian Caritas, 2 Masquerade the Blazing Dragon, 1 Guardian Chimera, 1 Despian Proskinian, 2 The First Dark Lord, 1 Condemned Dark Lord, 1 IP Mascarena, 1 SP Little Knight, and one underworld goddess of the closed world. So as you can see, there have been a few deck changes since the last time I posted this video, which believe it or not, it's actually been uh, over two years at this point. You're getting close to it anyways. So this is definitely my favorite way to play Dark Lords. And later on on the next video, I'll showcase the most competitive way. But what I really like about this one is you actually get to see a lot of your Dark Lord uh, fairy cards in action versus the version I'll do later, which has to do branded, um, which has branded support. You're going to see a lot more fairies here. So we have a lot of search power and potential. We also would like to go first if we can, so I never want to see uh, more than one Max C in my hand, which is why I only run this at two. Also, with the heavy search power, you don't need it as much. Um, in this deck list, we've also started to run uh, three Allure of Darkness just for the extra draw power. We do run a few doubles of cards like Indulged, uh, Despian Tragedy, which of course will get an extra search after the draw, uh, Dark Lord Ixgel, things like that. But it's really important for us to draw into as many varied cards as possible, which is why this has started to be run at three in my build. I also am running two Dark Lord Contacts because I need that extra extension power and I don't mind seeing it as much as uh, I do with two cards versus one like I used to. Right now, Super Poly is very important, so you definitely have to run three as Board Breakers. I've also extended with a Triple Tactics Thrust Engine, which if they activate a monster effect, I can set a normal spell or trap directly from the deck or add it to the hand. So it lets me play a little more versatile. So I can, if I need to search something to hand, say they blew up a field spell, I can search for a greater poly. And then I can make uh, the first Dark Lord and make it indestructible by card effects and allow it to do piercing damage. I could also search for one of my Dark Lord spells. I could search for Allure, Gold Sark, anything that's a standard uh, normal spell or trap. I can also search for Banishment or Sanctified. So it, it works well as a versatile extender in this deck. And of course I pair it with triple tactics as I can search into tactics with thrust or I can just use uh, tactics as an interruption piece. I still am running Ret Time Reviver just in case there is a troublesome card on the field I need to flip face down. 
or to bait out some effects on the opponent's board. What's really good about this deck is it actually goes in pretty heavy against the current meta, which revolves heavily around Ubel, because if I can bait out some of the effects through the searches, eventually I will end on being able to fuse with Dark Lord Morningstar. And when I do that, I'll absolutely blow up their entire field in back row, and that's usually going to result in a scoop. So it's an OTK deck that has the ability to full board wipe on the way to that OTK, which is why it's so strong. And if you're going first, which going first it definitely doesn't mind, you'll aim to get Archlord Christian Engrave, so that way you can special summon it back to your field and uh, prevent anyone from special summoning monsters, which completely locks out most decks. I know it's a board lock, but I think it's a little more thematic with it being a fairy. And it isn't something that I can send on a one card combo. It does take a little bit of interaction to get to that point. So as for the extra deck, it's tweaked a little bit. Of course, I have the SP Little Knight package. I still have the Light Link and Jenna 4 Link cards. I've upped Masquerade to two because Masquerade just helps to burn their life points down and make them in directly into that OTK range. Also, Masquerade can come back and stop an OTK from their side. So, I would say you either need to run two Masquerade or run one Masquerade and two Caritas, but right now what's working best for me is two Masquerade. But all that aside, let's take a look at how it works in action. Okay, so this time we're going first. We are going to be able to get the first Dark Lord out. We do have a called by, we have some extra recursion. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. So we're gonna start by normal summoning a Luber. They have Ash, let's see, nope, okay. We're gonna get Despia Theater, the branded to hand. I'm gonna go ahead and activate it. I'm going to activate and I'm going to summon the first Dark Lord using all three fairies as material. Activate Dramaturge. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and use Dark Lord Contact because I want to extend a little extra. I'm going to special summon Ukabok. We're going to use Ukabok's effect and we're going to send Superbia to Grave to get it live for extra extension. So we're going to send it to Grave. I'm going to use the first Dark Lord's effect. And I'm going to summon Superbia. We're going to activate Superbia's effect. And we're going to summon a Luber. Alright, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into IP Mascarena. And I'm going to use a Luber. And I'm going to use Dark Lord Superbia. So already at this point, we're set up for interaction and we have one slower monster negate on a Dramaturge. So I'll set my called by, and I'll pass the turn. Okay, they've got a search, that's fine so far. Armageddon. Alright, I can go ahead and get more bodies, so let's do that. I'm gonna summon Superbia. Once again, trigger the effect, but now it's a new turn, so a Luber's effect will go off. Now keep in mind, if I use a Luber's search like I am here, I will not be able to use his effect negation from Grave, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add, uh, in this case, Branded in Red to my hand, since it'll be live during my next turn. Okay. They're gonna draw two. Now, the reason I did that to summon so many bodies is not only do I run SP Little Knight, but I also run Underworld Goddess. So, depending on what I want to do, I can stop them in two different ways. So, obviously, SP Little Knight is recurring Banish Interruption, which is really powerful. But Underworld Goddess is unaffected by my opponent's activated effects unless they actually target it, which is rare nowadays. And then also... If they activate a card or effect that special summons from the grave, I can negate it, 
Also, alongside being a blanket negate for all face-up effect monsters they control. So, depending on what they start playing, it'll let me see what I need to do. I saw a danger. Let's continue. Okay, so they're running a little bit of a danger heavy package. Okay, no worries so far. Suchi, okay, still no worries. Okay, they're going to go out of the main phase into the next step. So, I don't necessarily need SP, and I can technically block a summon from Grave, but I don't know if that's super effective. But, end of the day, I need a Luber back in Grave, and I would like Superbia back. So, let's go ahead and blanket negate and get these small boys off the field. Okay, they're gonna Munster Reborn. I do not want them to Munster Reborn my IP. That's dangerous, so I will negate that. All right, we got Banishment, which is great. All right, I'm gonna use Banishment here. And it's not needed, but I'm going to go ahead and showcase the effect to you guys. I'm going to get Morningstar, but I'm going to do it the backwards way. So I'm going to use Indulged first. So Indulged is a great extender for Dark Lords, but it will lock you into fairy effects for the rest of the turn. So keep that in mind as you play. That's why I like the variant that uses uh, Despians paired with uh, Dark Lords, because they're all fairies. So I'm going to Normal Summon, Indulge. I'm going to Activate, Indulge. Alright, so I will Special Summon to their side, Nergal. And I'm going to add Morningstar to my hand. Alright, now at this point I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Despia, Theater of the Branded. And I'm going to Fusion Summon into the first Dark Lord using Dark Lord Morningstar. Ukabok and Indulge Dark Lord. So, you've already seen the revival capability of the first Dark Lord, but the first Dark Lord has another effect if it is specifically summoned using Dark Lord Morningstar. I can board wipe all cards on their side of the field. This is really good, even more so if they have a bigger board, but in this case, I can still wipe them away. And I'm not worried about it, but say they were also playing a Dark Lord engine, I could negate Nurgle, or I could have just chosen not to summon it to their field. Board wipe. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use Branded and Red just for some extra sauce. Get a Luber back to hand. And then we will go ahead and bring out another boss card, which is uh, Despian Caritas. And at this point, we have 16,000 damage on board, more than enough to finish, but with Flare, we'll kill them with both Dark Lords. Okay, but what if we're going second? As you're aware, we're not running a whole lot of hand traps, so we have to be able to break whatever they put on field. They're going to go through their combo, as you're aware from before, they're playing Dangers. I'm not going to end Dark World. I'm not going to be able to stop it too much with this hand, but I do have some ways to push further through. So Greater Poly is great because it gives uh, the first Dark Lord some piercing capability. I drew Banishment, which means I'm going to be able to search the first Dark Lord, and I also drew Allure of Darkness so I can draw 
deeper. So let's start with a draw deeper to test for Ash. They don't have it. I drew into Tragedy, which is even better because Tragedy paired with the lore not only gives me a draw too, but it gives me a free surge. So I'm going to do that first. Tragedy will search. And I'll bring to hand Dramaturge of Despia. I'm going to use Banishment of the Dark Lords to search for Morningstar. That card is once per turn, otherwise it would be even crazier. And then I'm going to use Aluber, the Jester of Despia. Activate effect. And I'm going to search Despia Theater, the Branded, just for a little bit of protection and recursion. Then I'm going to use Greater Poly. I'm going to fuse the first Dark Lord using Morningstar, Dramaturge, and Ret Time Emitter. It's completely fine to use Ret Time here because Ret Time can actually activate from Grave for interruption. Another good thing about the Despians is you can actually chain block things like the Dark Lord effect with Dramaturge of Despia or vice versa, depending on what you want. This is especially important against decks like Ubel, so you can block and protect your Dark Lord effects to keep them from interacting with them. So it will summon to the field, board wipe, and then I also have Ixchel in hand and I have another banishment so I can use it to draw two to see what I get into because I don't need those in hand. Okay, we drew a Foolish Burial. So I'm gonna go ahead and send to Grave for the follow-up, Archlord Christia. And then at this point, we'll use Theater the Branded's fusion effect that we haven't used. And Caritas, you guys have seen in the past, Caritas is a solid choice, and usually I'm going to go for that because it lets me take the attack of all monsters they have, except for level 8 or higher fusions, to zero. And if it leaves because of a card effect, I can special summon a Fallen of Albaz or Despia from my deck. So, phenomenal extender and Despia. Alternatively, if I know they're an effect-heavy deck, I can use Masquerade to burn them down because I know that they're going to have to go through a lot of effects and that's going to really hurt them and even make them limit their plays. But in this case, I sent Krisha to Grave, so I know I'm going to be able to lock them from special summoning, so it's not necessary. So I'm going to go Karitas just so I have that extra recursion. So we'll send Indulged and Aluber to Grave. Obviously, you see the Dramaturge slow negate. And just like before, I have 9500 on board. Usually, you're going to OTK immediately like this. But if for some reason you're not able to, and we'll just pass so you can see this situation, you have ways to stop them. So I can use SP Little Knights or IP... Uh, Masquerade and Goddess like I did before, or if I manage to draw into it, of course I can use Krishja to lock out special summons, which is going to be devastating to decks like Ubel or Snake Eyes, because at this point there's nothing they can do. Now they're going to spend a lot of resources trying to remove Krishja, but if Krishja is removed, um, or sent to grave, it'll just go on top of your deck. So you'll draw it again next turn, and it just makes it really nasty to deal with. As you can see, I can't fusion summon, so I have to rely on what I have on board currently. Dark Lords is a much older deck, but what's so fun about it is its ability to completely win from nowhere. I really love the lore paired with the in archetype board wipe. For the next video, I'll showcase the most competitive version, which is the branded variant but you'll have to decide for yourself which one you find more fun. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you next time.